Hey everyone, thanks for joining me today. I'm Miss Nene and welcome to Miss Nene's Art. If this is your first time here, make sure you hit that subscribe button and click that notification bell so you know what I'm up to because I'm always up to something. So today I am making some coasters. I went to Walmart and I am going to show you my fabric haul that I got. I picked up quite a few different um, types of material or theme material. I have my Coca-Cola. I got these cute emoji ones. I found some sugar skull. This has like some little glitter. Oops, dropped that one. <laughs> Too excited, I guess. So I got this one. This one has some little sparkling glitter accents on the skull. I don't know if the camera is picking up on it. Walmart, don't be sleeping on Walmart. Walmart has some really nice um, material, beautiful fabric. I go for the package ones here because they have different themes. So I got two of the Coca-Cola ones. And I got this bundle here, which is the Nightmare Before Christmas, Jack Skellington. This one came with several different patterns, which is perfect. I'm going to be making some Halloween uh, coasters very soon. And I'm going to be using these. These are super cute. So I don't know if I'm gonna just use, cause I usually make just sets of four. Uh, make each coaster different or just do one particular um, design from one bundle. But I've got a little bit of time before I decide that. This one's really nice too. The thing about using fabric, different types of fabric um, when making coasters is that you have a variety of different types of styles you can use. So also I have some more, um, night, more Nightmare Before Christmas. I found a bunch of different ones. This one is really nice too. This one was just under $2 in the bundles. Although these are uh, Disney products. It wasn't really that expensive. This one here is a small one, so that one was just a, just under two dollars. And the bundles, I want to say, was a little bit over seven dollars. So I found this one. This is cute. This is cute for a set of four coasters for teachers. And then I found these Hocus Pocus, which is another Halloween theme. I'm going to be making coasters out of these. This one is, um, these are really cute. I really like this one. I was really happy when I found this set or this bundle. But I'm gonna make a set of four out of this. So this would be my other Halloween theme coasters. And let's see what else. And this one is cute. A nice little floral set of coasters. I should have got two of those though. And here's the other Nightmare Before Christmas, Jack Skeleton. And then I found, oh, there's another one. Yeah, like I said, I did find a few different ones. So I've got quite a bit of um, Halloween themed coasters I'm going to be making very soon. So don't forget to subscribe so you can see that. And then I found this Disney villains. I thought that was pretty cool. And so I'm going to be making this as well. This one's really nice. I love that one. That could be a Halloween theme too. Yeah, I really like that one. I love making coasters. If I'm not making coasters using fabric, I'm using either um, stickers or I'm using um, stock paper. And then check this one out. This one is Beauty and the Beast. I was looking to see if it had the beast in it, but it doesn't. It just has the castle. It has the beast once he's turned back into the, the prince, it has Belle, and it has the, the stained glass. Um, flower, the rose. That's really cute. And then I found some really cute Harry Potter. Those are really cute. I found two different ones. Here they are right here. I've made Harry Potter themed 
coasters before out of other material. I'll be sure to link the video to those. And then I found a bundle, another bundle of villains. This is, um, I think there's four or five in here, five in here. Five different villain themed uh, fabric. This one, Cruella the Ville. I like that one. That's really cool. And then we have the different evil princesses, or they're not even princesses, evil villains. And then some more. The mermaid villain. I can't think of her name right now. Ursula. <laughs> Ursula. And the evil queen. And then another set of villains. All right. So I already know which one I'm going to use. I'm going to make a set of coasters today using the cute little emojis. So I'm gonna put these away and get everything prepped and ready to go. Okay, so I got my four ceramic tile. You can pick these up at Home Depot, Lowe's, any type of neighborhood hardware store. Um, you can also get them from Amazon. The ones on Amazon are a little bit different. Um, they don't have a glaze. These have a glaze because, you know, they're floor tile. <laughs> so, I mean, it's basically used for the wall, the floor, but I turn them into beautiful things. So, but you can still use the ones that are unglazed. It's fine because you're covering it up anyway, right? So all I'm doing here is just sizing up where I want to cut my fabric. Okay, so the next step is now that I have all my fabric cut up, now it's time to place it on my tile. So I'm gonna spread some Mod Podge onto the tile and then I'm going to lay my fabric down on top of it. Now it is okay if, um, if you put too much glue, I've done that many times, well this glue, Mod Podge, and it will seep through the uh, fabric, that is fine because it's, it's all gonna dry clear anyway. And that's also another reason why I do this next step is once I have the fabric on top of the tile where I want it, then I add another coat, at least two coats of Mod Podge on top of the fabric after it's all in place and it will dry clear, but it will put a protective coat on top of the fabric which will protect your fabric from the resin. 
because if you don't do that, the resin will seep through the material and it will leave spots and stains and you don't want that. So once you spread your Mod Podge onto the tile, find your placement, put your material down on top of it, smooth it out, get all the little lumps and smooth it out where it's nice and flat and smooth. No air pockets or anything like I'm doing right here. Um, also the sides. Then you top the top of the fabric with one coat, let it dry, and then a second coat of the Mod Podge because that is going to be your barrier to protect the fabric from the resin. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm going to be folding it under. So I'm cutting the corners so it make it easier for me to fold them behind the tile. I'm just cutting off some excess material that I didn't need. But yeah, I'm cutting off the corners, each corner, and I'm going to glue, put some glue, the Mod Podge underneath in these areas on the side and just underneath it and fold it back. That's gonna give it a really nice, pretty finish once everything is dry and resined. And then I put my um, adhesive cork backing on because the adhesive cork backing is not, it will not cover the entire back. It's gonna leave some of the edges showing and doing it this way gives it a really nice finish.
Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and coat my fabric with the Mod Podge. It doesn't matter if it's matte or gloss. It doesn't really matter because you're gonna put resin on it anyway once it's dry. So I'm gonna put on one coat and then off camera, I'm going to, um, once it's dry off camera, I'm gonna go ahead and put another coat on. Okay, so I'm gonna let this sit and I will be back for the next step. Okay, so it's been about an hour. I let them sit for a little bit, about an hour, hour and a half. Um, after the, the first coat dried, I went on ahead and put a second coat on and um, everything is dry. There's a nice, solid hard top now on the fabric so um, the resin will not damage your fabric now it's perfect that is why you can't skip that step so make sure you put at least two coats of uh, the Mod Podge on top of your fabric same thing when you're doing the same thing with uh, certain stickers and stock papers or whatever so all I'm doing now is just trimming up, cutting off some of the extra fabric that I don't need. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add the resin.
So when I'm applying my resin to my coasters, I use my fingers and uh, I spread it all over the top. I get the sides and I get just underneath it around where the fabric is gonna be tucked under um, so that everything is resined. The sides just underneath where I folded the fabric, I want that to have some resin on it. Um, and across the top. Using my fingers make it easy for me to tell what I did not, or what I missed, you know, in case I missed a spot. Using my fingers, I'm able to feel that. Even through the glove, I can feel if there's any dry spots where I may have missed, to, where I may have missed, my tongue is tied today, where I may have missed spreading some resin. So that's easy for me. Okay, so that's done. I'm just popping surface bubbles with my torch. And so what I have to do now is just wait for at least 24 hours for this to cure, enough for me to be able to handle it because the last and final step is adding these cork adhesive bottoms to it to finish it out. So I will see you in 24 hours. Well, actually it's not 24 hours for you, is it? So I'll be back as soon as these are cured. Okay, I'm back. It's been 24 hours for me and it is cured enough for me to be able to handle it. And it looks so nice, so nice, so nice, so nice. Um, but realistically, these should cure for at least mm, maybe three to five more days just to make sure that it is completely cured before you put anything on top of it to start using them as coasters. But they turned out beautiful. I don't know if the camera is picking up on the glitter, but it has a really light, subtle sparkle to it. I didn't wanna to add too much glitter to it, but it has a really nice, fine um, yellow glitter throughout the coasters. So I'm just gonna flip these over and I'm gonna add the cord backing to it.
You see what I mean when I said about folding it, the material under to give it a really cute finished look for the back? This is what I was talking about. Now, doesn't that look much more professional and neater? Folding the material over like that, it looks beautiful. Absolutely love it. Or you could just cut it, the edges, and just paint the back. And I do that with other coasters when I'm not using fabric. But usually when I use fabric, I like to tuck it under because I really want that pattern to go underneath as well. Okay, I'm done. So what do you think? These turned out so cute. I love them so much. I love them so much. When I saw this emoji fabric, I knew I had to have it. I knew they would make a beautiful set of coasters. Let me know what you think about how this turned out in the comments below. I love to read your feedback. And I will leave a link to the cork backings. Um, they're in my Amazon store, so I'll leave that for you. And don't forget to check out Walmart and their fabrics. And try this, try it. I absolutely love making them and I cannot wait to do the rest. So make sure you like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell because you saw that fabric, right? I'm about to make some more, a lot more. Christmas, Halloween, just, I'm just gonna be at it. So thank you for watching. I appreciate you, I appreciate your time. Thank you, thank you so much for watching. See you next time, bye-bye.